Charles was walking through the woods one day, looking for a local medieval fair. You see, Charles was a guy who loved anything medieval, such as knights, castles, princesses and dragons. He would always look forward to medieval fairs to experience everything that happened during the time when kings and queens ruled the land. Who wouldn't want that? Anyways, Charles tried to look for a sign leading to a medieval fair, but alas, there were none in sight. He kept looking, but there were still no signs advertising for a medieval fair. Charles sighed as he was disappointed that there wasn't a medieval fair this year. He was about to walk back home when he stumbled across a pair of yellowish shoes. Huh? What are these doing in the middle of the woods? Charles asked himself, as he looked at the shoes that stood before him. He wondered if they belonged to someone, but nobody came to collect them. So Charles decided to take his old shoes off, and put the new ones on. However, when he did, he began to feel itchy. He looked down at his feet, and his eyes widened in fear. Underneath the shoes, his feet became covered in red fur, as two of his toes merged together into three toed feet. What in the world? Charles started to panic as he tried to take the shoes off, but they wouldn't come off. It was as if they were stuck to his feet like glue. The red fur spread up to his legs, which became very fluffy, while his spine extended into a fox tail. At the same time, his pants somehow dissolved into thin air. Then Charles' entire body became covered in red fur, while white fur covered his chest and belly. When the red fur reached his arms, they too became fluffy as two of his fingers merged together on each hand, leaving him with four-fingered hands. Am I becoming a fox? Charles shouted. The fur was now spreading up his neck with white fur covering his throat. Then his head began to change, as it became covered in red fur, while white fur covered his general mouth area. His ears moved to the top of his head, as they became pointed, like a fox's ears, except without the dark tips. Charles' eyes became more cartoonish, while his nose rounded out and became black. It also stretched his face out into a canine muzzle, as his teeth became sharper. His hair became the same color as the red fur and shrunk into a hair tuft. Charles couldn't believe his eyes. The shoes he put on must have transformed him into some kind of anthropomorphic fox. He hopes that the changes are over, but unfortunately for him, they aren't. That's when his clothes begin to change. His shirt became a sort of green tunic, as a brown belt formed around his waist. Literally topping off the transformation was a green hat with a red feather in it, which appeared out of nowhere onto his head. Dash whoa. What just happened? Charles said, as he stood in confusion. Then, he noticed a small lake nearby, so he walked over to the lake and looked at his reflection. What he saw was a 2D animated red fox wearing what seemed to be a green archer's outfit similar to Peter Pan's outfit, except without the tights. The fox looked very familiar. Oh my stars, I'm Robin Hood. Charles gasped in awe, as he realized that the shoes had turned him into Robin Hood. Not only that, but he was the animated fox version from Walt Disney's Robin Hood film. Charles knew that Robin Hood was a heroic outlaw from the late medieval period who was known to rob from the rich, and give to the poor. And now Charles had became the Disney version of the famous folk figure. Charles, or should I say Robin Hood, then found a bow and arrow lying around on the ground. Hmm. What's this? He said, as he picked up both items. He knew that Robin Hood was a great archer, so he decided to test out the bow and arrow by shooting a nearby tree. To his surprise, the arrow struck right into the tree's center. Cool. He said, I wonder where little John is. Robin Hood then decided to continue walking through the forest, as he set off to find his loyal sidekick, little John. Charles was walking through the woods one day, looking for a local medieval fair. You see? Charles was a guy who loved anything medieval, such as knights, castles, princesses and dragons. He would always look forward to medieval fairs to experience everything that happened during the time when kings and queens ruled the land. Who wouldn't want that? Anyways, Charles tried to look for a sign leading to a medieval fair, but alas, there were none in sight. He kept looking, but there were still no signs advertising for a medieval fair. Charles sighed as he was disappointed that there wasn't a medieval fair this year. He was about to walk back home when he stumbled across a pair of yellowish shoes. Huh? What are these doing in the middle of the woods? Charles asked himself, 
as he looked at the shoes that stood before him. He wondered if they belonged to someone, but nobody came to collect them. So Charles decided to take his old shoes off and put the new ones on. However, when he did, he began to feel itchy. He looked down at his feet, and his eyes widened in fear. Underneath the shoes, his feet became covered in red fur, as two of his toes merged together into three toed feet. What in the world? Charles started to panic as he tried to take the shoes off, but they wouldn't come off. It was as if they were stuck to his feet like glue. The red fur spread up to his legs, which became very fluffy, while his spine extended into a fox tail. At the same time, his pants somehow dissolved into thin air. Then Charles' entire body became covered in red fur while white fur covered his chest and belly. When the red fur reached his arms, they too became fluffy as two of his fingers merged together on each hand, leaving him with four-fingered hands. Am I becoming a fox? Charles shouted. The fur was now spreading up his neck, with white fur covering his throat. Then his head began to change, as it became covered in red fur, while white fur covered his general mouth area. His ears moved to the top of his head, as they became pointed like a fox's ears, except without the dark tips. Charles' eyes became more cartoonish, while his nose rounded out and became black. It also stretched his face out into a canine muzzle, as his teeth became sharper. His hair became the same color as the red fur, and shrunk into a hair tuft. Charles couldn't believe his eyes. The shoes he put on must have transformed him into some kind of anthropomorphic fox. He hopes that the changes are over, but unfortunately for him, they aren't. That's when his clothes begin to change. His shirt became a sort of green tunic, as a brown belt formed around his waist. Literally topping off the transformation was a green hat with a red feather in it, which appeared out of nowhere onto his head. Dash whoa. What just happened? Charles said, as he stood in confusion. Then, he noticed a small lake nearby, so he walked over to the lake and looked at his reflection. What he saw was a 2D animated red fox wearing what seemed to be a green archer's outfit similar to Peter Pan's outfit, except without the tights. The fox looked very familiar. Oh my stars, I'm Robin Hood. Charles gasped in awe, as he realized that the shoes had turned him into Robin Hood. Not only that, but he was the animated fox version from Walt Disney's Robin Hood film. Charles knew that Robin Hood was a heroic outlaw from the late medieval period who was known to rob from the rich, and give to the poor. And now Charles had became the Disney version of the famous folk figure. Charles, or should I say Robin Hood, then found a bow and arrow lying around on the ground. Hmm. What's this? He said, as he picked up both items. He knew that Robin Hood was a great archer, so he decided to test out the bow and arrow by shooting a nearby tree. To his surprise, the arrow struck right into the tree's center. Cool. He said, I wonder where little John is. Robin Hood then decided to continue walking through the forest, as he set off to find his loyal sidekick, little John. Samuel was your average 27-year-old guy. He lived in the suburbs, had a decent house, and a good paying job. He seemed pretty normal. Except that he was also into opening a beauty parlor. Well, sort of. However, there weren't any empty spaces available in town for him to open a beauty parlor at. This upset Samuel because he really wanted to help women look their best. And he also wanted to do it for a living. Every day, Samuel wished for there to be some way he could open his dream beauty parlor, but he knew that it would most likely never happen. But little did he know that this would soon change for him. One day, Samuel was busy reading the newspaper, when something had caught his eye. There was a free space available for lease, and that anyone who was willing to take it could use the space for any type of business they liked. But the space wasn't in his local city, but in some place called Green Patch. Samuel didn't know there was about this Green Patch area, but the free space sure got him excited. Well, that's awesome, Samuel said. Now I can finally open a beauty parlor. Samuel then got in his car, and started to drive to where the free space was located in Green Patch. It was a long drive, but Samuel didn't seem to care much. Dash after a few hours, Samuel finally arrived at Green Patch. He then walked down the village until he saw the free space advertised in the newspaper. The space looked like a fairly small building but it was at least tall enough for him to walk through. There didn't seem to be anyone else inside, 
but there was a note lying around. Samuel then picked up the note, and began to read it. Hello there, if you happen to come across this note, it will give you instructions on how to start up your business. To get started, please write down which business you would like to set up on the black space below. Samuel then picked up a pen in his pocket, and wrote beauty parlor on the black space on the note. It then disappeared, and soon another note appeared in its place. Samuel then read the second note, a beauty parlor, huh? Alright, but before you start. Please choose one of the perfume bottles to your left, and then apply it onto yourself. Good luck. Um, okay, Samuel said, confused at the note's instructions. But if he was going to set up his business, he might as well do what the note says. Samuel then walked up to the counter on the left where the perfume bottles were. He picked the one colored tan and blue. Samuel then started to apply the perfume to his arms, legs, body and face. He wasn't sure what applying perfume had to do with setting up his business, but at least that made him smell nicer. It also smelled kind of feminine, but Samuel couldn't care less. After he put the perfume bottle back, he started feeling really itchy. He looked at his arms, and saw that they were covered in tan fur. Not only that, but it was spreading rapidly. Samuel's eyes widened in horror as the fat in his arms disappeared making his arms become more lean and feminine. When the fur reached his hands, he lost a finger on each hand, leaving him with four fingers. Then, his hands became more dainty and feminine. Samuel was terrified now, as the fur continued to spread down his body, with a lighter shade of tan covering his chest and belly. His body frame also began to change, as the fat from his stomach moved down to his hips and rear, which both expanded to feminine proportions. His torso build shortened down a decent amount, as his shoulders cracked inwards a bit, while his stomach caved in a bit, giving him an hourglass look. Samuel also felt a sudden build-up in his chest, as some of the fat from his stomach had moved up to his chest to form two decently sized breasts. What the? Am I becoming a girl? Samuel yelled. Please don't let this be real. He didn't want to believe that he was becoming female, but he had to when he felt a sharp pain down by his private area. Just as he feared, his male privates had been sucked in, and replaced with female ones, which removed his masculinity and officially made him or her. The fur then spread down to her legs, which also lost fat and muscle much like her arms, while her thighs flared out a bit. When the fur reached her feet, not only did they become small and dainty, but they also lost two digits on each, leaving her with three toed feet. Samuel also felt a tugging feeling on her rear area, as a long, fluffy tail burst out, ruining her undergarments. Samuel soon calmed down a bit, and walked over to the mirror. She saw that her body looked like that of a cartoon animal girl. The only thing left unchanged was her head but she knew that wouldn't last long. The fur had soon reached her face, as her neck thinned out a bit, while her Adam's apple vanished, leaving her with a feminine voice. Her ears moved to the top of her head as they grew longer and slightly folded. Her eyebrows thinned out as her eyes became slightly larger, and turned black, while her eyelashes grew out a bit. Her nose became black and damp, while her face stretched out into a canine muzzle with two small fangs sticking out beneath her upper lip. A bit of pink lipstick was applied to her lips as well. Then the sides of her face stretched out a bit as they formed two cheek tufts on each side of her face. Finally, her hair became the same color as the fur, and shrank down until it was just a hair tuft now. After her face changed, Samuel could now recognize herself more. Am I, Daisy Dingo? Samuel said in awe. As she got a good look at herself, she realized that the perfume had turned her into Daisy Dingo, a female character from The Adventures of Blinky Bill. She was the teenage sister of Danny, Meatball and Shifty Dingo. Samuel did admit she looked quite pretty as a Dingo girl. However, her transformation wasn't quite finished yet. That's when her clothes began to change. First, her shirt shrank down, losing the sleeves to become a teal halter top. Then her pants lengthened and turned into light blue jeans, with a small hole in the back for her tail. Her sacks vanished as her shoes became teal, and shrunk down to fit her feet. Finishing off the transformation was a minor age regression, as she went from a young adult to a teenager in just a few seconds. Samuel, now Daisy, was no longer frightened, 
But now she was now happy with her new look, as she admired herself in the mirror. She was now more beautiful, not to mention younger as well. Then she remembered that she still needed to set up her beauty parlor. Let's get going. I hope my beauty parlor will be a great success. The end.